relation sure. of Russia and China have come closer than ever they were in the past after the Ukraine war. What impact this is having or the challenges that the U.S. is facing in solving the major global problems like climate change, food supply, inflation? Well, uh, we should not have these uh, wedges uh, when it comes to challenges that are universal in nature. Uh, we're in an era that is defined by two underlying factors. One is strategic competition, uh, and we are seeing stri strategic competition uh, unfortunately play out in uh, dangerous um, ways with what Russia and China are trying to do by advancing uh, the vision of the world that they have that is fundamentally at odds uh, of the vision that's set forth in the UN Charter, fundamentally at, fundamentally at odds uh, with uh, the vision that the United States and so many of our allies and partners and countries around the world uh, also share. Uh, that's one factor. But uh, the reemergence of strategic competition hasn't done away with uh, the transnational challenges that we face, the challenge of a changing climate, the challenge of um, infectious disease and public health concerns more broadly. Uh, the challenge of narcotics uh, and um, uh, the need on the part of countries around the world uh, to work to address the scourge of fentanyl uh, and other uh, drugs that are ravaging communities in this country, but also communities uh, around the world. These are challenges that the United States has tremendous capacity to help address, but these are not challenges we can solve uh, alone. Um, we're always going to be more effective against every single one of these challenges when we work with uh, partners and allies, but also countries with whom we share otherwise very little in common. Uh, and China may well fall into that category. It's, we think, it is the responsible thing to do uh, to work with the PRC where our interests align. And our interests clearly align on these transnational challenges that are a threat to the American people, that are a threat to the Chinese people, uh, that are a threat to uh, people around the world. It is also what the rest of the world expects of us. Uh, this isn't just an expectation that we have on, on the part of the PRC. Countries around the world want to see the United States and China working together uh, to address these challenges. Now, the fact that we uh, seek to work together doesn't mean that we see eye to eye. Uh, quite the contrary, uh, but where our interests align, and these are areas where our interests align, we think uh, it is responsible, we think it is the right thing to do, we think it's the necessary thing to do for us to work together. Alex. Okay, uh, let me follow up on that. I have two more other topics. Uh, will the Secretary use the UN platform tomorrow to share what you guys already know about China-Russia cooperation? I wouldn't expect him to, to go into any uh, detail on this front. He has had an opportunity in recent days to uh, speak to our concerns uh, about uh, what we've seen uh, already between the PRC and Russia, or the concern we have that uh, the PRC could take additional steps that they've heretofore uh, declined uh, to take. He spoke to that uh, from Munich. He's spoken to that uh, when he's been asked about it in recent days, including earlier today. Uh, our message to the PRC has been uh, consistent. They uh, would decide to provide lethal assistance or to provide systematic assistance to Russia in its uh, sanctions evasion at uh, their own peril. It, it would come uh, with costs and consequences from the United States, from uh, the international community. We're watching this uh, very closely. We've had these conversations directly, candidly, frankly, uh, with the PRC, including when the Secretary met with Wang Yi in Munich uh, just last weekend. But do you have any new uh, updated assessment on why China is doing what it is doing? I mean, quite, honest, quite honestly, they have been staying away from this for a year. Uh, any, any, it seems odd a little bit, you know. I, I, I would actually disagree with that, um, Alex. I don't think China has been staying away from this for the past year. In fact, uh, the PRC has been providing important support to Russia uh, over the course of this last year. They attempt to maintain this uh, veneer of neutrality, professing to the world that uh, they're not taking a side, but they've clearly chosen a side. In the weeks leading up to this invasion, when it was crystal clear, at least should have been crystal clear to the PRC, uh, what Russia intended, they signed uh, this uh, communique, 5,000 word communique, that spoke of a partnership without limits uh, over the course of Russia's aggression in Ukraine. 
Uh, the PRC has provided diplomatic support, they've provided political support, they've provided economic support. Uh, they have echoed and parroted uh, Russia's propaganda, its lies, its distortions, its mistruths, uh, in an effort to shield Russia and to propagate uh, what it is trying to feed the world, a steady diet of disinformation and lies.